Hello. Today we'll be talking about Korean economy. A lot of people call the South Korean economy a miracle economy because South Korea has made a profound economic transformation in the past 70 years after liberation in 1945. Let us go through some empirical checks. South Korean economy's initial conditions were extremely bad. South Korea suffered from colonial legacy, poor infrastructure, lack of capital, and qualified manpower. And even South Korea didn't have any market access as a result of a colonial domination uh, for the past 40 years in 1945. Another big issue regarding the Korean economy was its competition. The South Korean economy was very much agrarian economy. The agricultural sector accounted for the more than 60% of Korean GDP at a time. An extremely poor and agrarian society was the reality of Korea, South Korea in 1945. And also South Korea has a very poor resource endowment. South Korea didn't have any oil and gas. South Korea did not have any critical mineral resources. It has a rather small market size, yet population was huge. Therefore, South Korea's uh, carrying capacity was very much limited. As a result, per capita income in 1945, immediately after Korean liberation, was about $35 per person, one of the poorest in the world. Okay. And more than that, 78% of Korean population was illiterate after national independence in 1945. And more interesting was that tax revenue accounted for only 5% of national budget. Now you can see how Korean economy was poor in 1945. However, look at the profile of economic transformation in South Korea. As you can see in the, in the graph, 1945, our per capita income was $35. And by year 2020, year 2015, our per capita income reached about $28,000. And you can see the pattern. 50s were still low, 60s were still low, but 70s and 80s on, South Korea began to show huge change in per capita income. And also gross rate is the same. 1950, just about 1% gross rate. And starting from 1965, the South Korean economy went through the set of medium-term economic planning efforts. There was a systematic effort to develop the economy by introducing an you know, export-led growth strategy and also enacting foreign capital inducement law and etc. Since then, South Korea began to show rapid growth rate. Therefore, through the 1965 to 75 per capita, at what annual growth rate reached almost 10 percent per year on the average. But in 1980, there was a sharp decrease because we had the severe economic crisis in 1979 and 1980. Uh, therefore, in 1980, our, our economy showed a minus 4.8% uh, growth rate. Then, through the 1985 to 1995, about 8% you know, growth rate uh, per year on average. But again, 1998, we had a second major economic crisis. Okay? Uh, South Korean economy record is um, minus 3.8%. Likewise, you can see ups and downs in the South Korean economy. But overall, South Korea is able to maintain economic growth rate of about 10% per year from mid-1960s to late-1970s. And again, in mid-1980s to early-1990s, South Korea showed a very high growth rate uh, per year. Another important indicator of uh, economic transformation is a remarkable expansion of manufactured ex exports. 
you can clearly see from the graph, okay, 1960, you know, virtually none export of manufactured goods. And from 1975, when South Korea studied the hemichemical industrialization, export of manufactured goods were rapidly on the rise. And 1994, it reached quite phenomenal in amount, okay? Almost it reached what? Uh, about $140 billion in, uh, toward the end of uh, 1990s. And another important indicator, South Korea was a forerunner of newly industrializing countries. More importantly, South Korea is one of the very few successful cases which graduated from the status of developing countries to become a member of OECD. Here, OECD refers to Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in 1994. OECD membership means the transformation of South Korean economic status from developing to developed countries. Okay. OECD members is so-called you know, advanced industrialized countries you know, become the member of OECD. Therefore, South Korea made the transition in 1994. Then how about the present status of the Korean economy? Uh, as you, as the, you know, the previous graphs showed up, uh, South Korea per capita income in year 2015 is about 30,000 US dollars. Okay, to total gross domestic product uh, went beyond almost one you know, trillion dollars. Then uh, it was the 14th, 14th largest economy in the world. Total export in year 2015 were uh, $548.8 billion, the sixth largest export, export economy in the world. Foreign reserve, okay. Uh, uh, official reserve uh, of South Korean economy is about you know, $369 billion as of uh, 2015, okay. At the March 2016, according to IMF figures, okay? But again, you know, since 2015, we had a foreign reserve of about, about $300 billion. And more than that, now South Korea has world-class semiconductor manufacturers. South Korea, Hyundai, is one of the leading automobile makers in the world. In fact, the fifth in the world. Shipbuilding has become number one, consumer electronics, and other important you know, sectors. Now, South Korea have been enjoying world top class you know, manufacturing status. Okay. Uh, and also, the Korea has shown the highest population with the tertiary education, meaning the, the students who are getting into the college. Okay. And uh, between 25 to 34 years old in a population category, 60. 7.7% went to college, okay? And, and also another important indicator is that South Korea used to be aid receiving country, but now it became a donor country. Now, uh, South Korea is a member of steering committee of uh, ODA, Overseas Development Assistant in a Council of OECD. That is a really symbol of South Korea becoming donor state and adverse industrial countries. And another important indicator is the so-called the, the patent, how much patent South Korean you know, firms uh, and universities have. According to the you know, uh, World Intellectual Property Organization, okay, as of 2014, South Korea was the fourth, the fourth largest patent holding countries country in the world, only after China, the US, and Japan. 